Hey everyone, it's Kyle. Quick announcement before we get started. Quest Friends has had over a hundred thousand downloads. At time of recording, we have 101,159 lifetime downloads of the show, and that's just, that's entirely too many. So to celebrate and say thank you for supporting us the past three years, we're going to be having a Jackbox Party Pack celebration stream tomorrow on Thursday, December 17th at 7 p.m. Central Time. If you're interested in hanging out for a little bit and voting on which of our terrible jokes is the most tolerable, you can check us out at that time on twitch.tv slash questfriends. I hope to see you there. Previously on Quest Friends. What is a guardian program? I only knew this child was special because Carl was babbling about them even before he'd flung open the door. The Guardian program was a way of looking for alternative parental figures for Misha. The scarf practically launched itself onto the coat rack in excitement as he'd explained how well the visit had gone. How? They're only a few years old, but they don't seem like it. They were smart, sweet. They're passionate, they're curious, and Ellie, they can sing. I've, I've never seen anything like them. And Ayn, who has been rustling through the drawers over this whole conversation, finally opens the one she was looking for, and she pulls out a small photograph. They were perfect. You're gonna be so excited. I just, I just know that you two will be best friends. He never made it past that man who died 45 years ago. He finally paused for a breath. I was told we need to come back tomorrow if we wanted to adopt. And she throws the photograph on the table. And with the exception of Misha, no one recognizes the man in the image. Well, almost no one. Carl. Le avventure di Pinocchio, storia di un burattino, di Carlo Collotto. E che il dottor Hyde fa una... The data sphere lacks consistency. Within this layered reality, fragments of information collide with each other to form malleable threads that can twist themselves into any form imaginable. But for a space where information manifests as reality, one's actual influence in the data sphere is surprisingly limited. And so, she plucked from the edges of her lips a small fragment of herself and breathed into it life. The lady then sought a relay, a messenger from the physical world that would be willing to serve as her vessel's body. And after some searching, she found them a perfectly sculpted human facsimile built by a cowardly ant who would be easy to scare into compliance. However, unlike their creator, Misha Jarvis was not so simple to control. Oh, well, this is very neat. What, what, what is it? Misha, you are standing with Carl in front of the Tirefly. He is just taking it all in. This man seems dwarfed by the large vehicle he's admiring. He's been just walking back and forth, examining all the little details, wanting to really take it in and show that he admires it without touching anything. It's not his place, of course. And he turns over to you and he, and he says that. He asks, you know, well, this is really neat. What is it? Tirefly! It is the Tirefly! Does Carl like the Tirefly? Carl really likes the Tirefly. And it looks like Carl's friend does too. As Carl whistled, you could see that this scarf that he had around his neck had like piped up when he made the little musical note and seemed to just gently put its end, kind of like a hand, on the tire fly. This scarf is one of his pieces of clothing. Just as he speaks, his clothes seem to sometimes dance along with him. This one tends to keep rhythm bouncing back and forth. You don't know what color it is. I mean, everything is red, but 
Comparing it to the tire fly, you can tell that it's that shade of red that Pete seems to call purple. Misha will reach their hand towards the scarf and say, friend, friend of Carl? They won't be touching it because they, yeah. even though they do want to. As you reach towards it, the scarf seems to recoil back in fear a little bit. Just like, ah, unfamiliar hand. But Scarl, Scarl. Scarl. <laughs> I thought that was just going to be the scarf's canonical name. Scarl. Scarl. That's the name of the scarf all along. That's so upsetting. <laughs> I'm so upset. But Carl takes the scarf and gently uh, coos as he puts it down in his calloused hands and it seems to rest. And he gently takes his hands and brings them with the scarf in it towards you and says, My scarf can be a little scared of things. (laughs) My wife likes to tell all sorts of scary stories. Oh, Misha does not want to scare Scarf. And they will kind of pull their hands back from the scarf a little bit. Oh, no, it's it's all right. It's all right. You said you wanted to be the scarf's friend? Yes. Well, and he, he doesn't wink. No, he does wink. He leans forward and winks a little bit. Do you know how to sing? Sing? M- Misha is not sure. Misha has heard of singing, but Misha has not tried before. Well, let's try together. And he motions for you to kind of get on your knees with him, kind of doing the thing that you do with kids where you get down to their level, Mm -hmm. even though you're (laughs) taller than him by a significant margin. (laughs) Yeah, we should immediately sit down all excitedly like kids do and like, let me tell you a story. Like they will sit down. Crisscross applesauce style. Yeah. And he motions the scarf out to you and he says, Now, the important part to any song is to sing it from your heart. Yes, important. And so the song I'm going to teach you today is... And he kind of pauses and almost like wistfully flashes back for a second. It needs to be sung with unconditional love. Love? Misha loves a lot of things. (laughs) All right. So can you place your hand right here? And he motions to basically on top of his hands on top of the scarf. Misha will do it very, like, slowly and, like, carefully, just just to not disturb the scarf or anything. And as you gently put your hands on the scarf, which has such an interesting texture, it's so soft while also so multifaceted. Normally, this kind of feeling would be rough when you have so many different parts to a texture, but there's something soft about this kind. Misha loves how scarf feels feels good. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I need you to hold on to that feeling, okay? Yes. This song cannot be sung with any bad feelings. You have to sing with your soul. My soul? Your soul, the deepest part inside of you. For any good song, you need to share the deepest, most important part of your soul. M- Misha will try. I think Misha can do that. I'm sure Misha can. All right, follow along with me. Oh, 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 See it? What? It it twitched. (gasps) And as you look, you can see that the scarf, in response to your singing, quiet and unsure as it is, is starting to, like, twitch a little bit. And it almost seems to be raising its end like its head. (gasps) Misha sees it. Misha, it, it, it moved. And it flumps back down the second you start (gasps) speaking. Oh, it stopped. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. It's just resting when we're not singing. Oh, Let's try one more time, but a little bit louder, okay? Yes. And as you continue to hum, the scarf slowly lifts its head up. <laughs> 
It looks around. It looks at you. It looks at your hand on it. It looks back at Carl, kind of confused, like, what's going on? And he just gives it a warm, loving nod. And as you finish your refrain, the scarf suddenly leaps out of your hands and wraps itself around your neck. (gasps) Oh, scarf is hugging Misha. (laughs) Exactly. Now to anybody else, it might just look like you're wearing that scarf, but you and it know that you're always hugging each other. And Carl just smiles at you. Misha will smile back, all excited, while while still like holding the scarf and and hugging it as well, (laughs) kind of wrapping themselves around it too. And you find yourself doing the same thing 45 years later. Although this one is less of a hug and more of a instinctual holding the scarf in anxiety. You are now in Kalodi's lab. In many ways, it's a lot less bright than the memory of Carl. It's been a few seconds since Ayn has pulled out his picture and shown it to you and the rest of your friends. Although I can tell you it hasn't felt that short. I mean, Misha will just... They will be kind of, in a sense, out of it, so they will be holding the scarf while looking at the picture, but really not saying anything other than just hugging it a little bit tighter while looking at it. And they explicitly will not look at Ellie. They'll just, like, fix their gaze in the picture. Ellie wanted to keep looking at the picture, but she also didn't. So she kind of stumbled backwards a little bit and is actually not really looking, but reaching out to grab the hand of whoever's closest. Who is closest? I don't know. I assume it's Hopper? It could be, it could be Hopper. Yeah, whoever it wants to be. That's who she's just going to grab for someone's hand. And at that grab, he'll be like, what's wrong? Um, (laughs) that's Carl. He went. Here. Yes, this man's name was Carl. Awfully nice man. He... How do you know that? Uh, um, oh. Billy just kind of looks at her like, yeah. Hopper spends a few seconds trying to think of a polite way to word a <laughs> follow-up question that doesn't seem pressing. <laughs> However, Ness doesn't really care about that. So Ness will go, I don't get it. Who is he? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That would be my husband. Oh. 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 <laughs> um, he came to see Misha, and I didn't go with. And then he didn't end up bringing Misha home. Goodbye, Misha. I'll come back tomorrow. Goodbye, Carl. Misha and Scarf Friend would like to see you tomorrow. (laughs) Misha had a lot of fun. You can see Carl waving as he walks out of Coachman's tree alongside Pete Wynn. And as he leaves, you hear him start humming to himself and, and singing. His boots and his hat start to dance along with him. At one point, Pete joins in the hat, just flips onto Pete and then flips back onto Carl. And as they go away, the scarf on your neck tick tocks to the song until it gets quieter and quieter and eventually flops down. After your song and seeing how much you loved it, Carl has decided to let you keep the scarf until he gets back with the little added comment. Now you have to make sure to practice the song. But seeing that the scarf has stopped moving, Misha immediately will start humming the song again and practicing little variations of it to see the scarf move again. And Misha will like bob their head a little to the rhythm as they sing and they, as they get more confident with it. And yeah, they're just really like learning to like that song. And so you make your way through Coachman's Tree singing the song. You eventually make it back to the, I'm not going to call it a building, more like the nest. If Coachman's Tree is a tree, then the rooms are like bird nests. You make it to the nest where you and the rest of the Jarvis models are staying. And you start just walking around, eventually passing by the forbidden room 
The Forbidden Room, of course, being Father's private lab. The doors are shut. They've been shut for a long time. He and Ayn have been in there working on something fierce the past couple of weeks. Misha will see it and will be even more tempted to go inside just because they want to show Ayn and Feather, but mostly Ayn, the friend, by having the scarf like touch her or something or like hug her too or something. But they think better of it because their hesitance is more than just their desire to show Ayn. So they'll just go around and look for other Jarvis models to show the <laughs> scarf to. Yeah, I like to believe you're just looping around the same hallway over and over waiting yeah. for them to get out. But you're just looping as you're walking around. You hear CK's boisterous voice say, well, hello there, Sim. What friend do you have there? Ow! And you can see that he had reached out one of his hands to just touch the scarf and get in its business. And it just slapped his hand away as he did that. Oh, CK! CK! Misha met a new friend! This is Scarf. Uh, Scarf? CK? CK? Scarf? CK, Scarf is slightly shy, but, uh, it likes singing. Does CK like singing? We could sing together. Mm. CK has flown in front of you and is using his other five hands to nurse his single little <laughs> end of hand that got hit. And he narrows his bug eyes at the scarf, which in turn looks at him. If it can narrow its eyes, it's could, but it's like perched with its neck kind of back. Mm. Most people are frightfully afraid of singing. If that's what this thing's deal is, I think it and I will be fantastic friends. Oh, good. Misha likes friends to be friends. Oh, friends. Oh. Um, that's, a, that's a sentence. Misha, Misha likes for friends to befriend other people too. Well, I'll join in. <laughs> CK, for the love of God, you have to stop making such an infernal racket. My, my apologies, Father, it was Misha's fault. I was showing CK Misha's friend. Does Father want to see Misha's friend? <sighs> and Colodi crosses his arms in his big lab coat and lets out a massive sigh. Right, Misha's friend, the one from Pete. Y yes, uh, Misha met, met Carl and met Scarf friend. Carl left, but he will come back tomorrow. His eyes grow wide when you say that, and he starts tapping his foot. Tomorrow. Yes, Misha thinks so. Is, is Father going to be out of his office tomorrow? Maybe Misha can introduce Carl to Father, and we could all sing with friend together. See, friend. <laughs> Perhaps. <gasps> And he just turns to CK and says, Now, CK, I have very important things to do. You are distracting both me and my assistant. So if you would please stop that racket and get that hideous thing off of their shoulders. And he motions to you, Misha, as he shuts the door behind him. Uh, no, Misha will look really sad at it and will look at CK without saying anything, but kind of pleading to not take the, the scarf off, like making poppy eyes. Ugh. <sighs> And then he covers his bug eyes with his six hands and he starts to fly away saying, I didn't see anything. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like they were like lower their voice at, at, at their first like out loud. Thank you. Thank you, CK. Thank you. I don't know why I make these sacrifices for you. And he takes two of his hands and just opens up one of his eyes. Ah, but you're just too dang cute to say no to. Ah! And he bumps into a pillar because he's been flying backwards with his eyes shut and he just starts mumbling to himself oh, no. as he flies off. Misha will probably go outside to sing with the scarf a bit more <laughs> since Fatter doesn't want noise inside. Yeah, so you go outside to sing with your scarf. You start walking around. Nobody really is around. CK, whenever you have a secret with CK, he has to go someplace else because he's too loud to keep it a secret. You haven't seen Ayn in weeks Ever since you had that race by yourself, she's been basically in lab all the time. So in the end, that just leaves you, your scarf, and your conscience. 
You continue to sing with the scarf, you have a good time, but suddenly your conscience pipes up again. Usually it gives you a feeling, you know, shame, fear, worry, although occasionally it does speak to you. And so as you're singing with your scarf, in your view, red words appear, a single red word with four letters, S-T-O-P. Misha will look at it, keep singing, but just a little bit slower and more tentatively. Like maybe, maybe that's not what she means. Maybe it's something else. So they will stop walking as, as much. They will just like stand in place and, and, and sing. Maybe it's just other things, but not, not that. The text reappears. Misha dot dot dot. Oh, hello. Um, why does conscience want Misha to stop? And as you ask that, a feeling of shame overwhelms you, Misha. Like, why Why should I be asking this question? Why should I be doing this? I should just trust my conscience. <sighs> my, my apologies, you are... You're correct. You're always correct and, and, and always take care of me. So I suppose I will stop singing for now. And so you stop singing. And what do you start doing? Well... They will still hug the scarf and I guess they will go towards the tire fly maybe and just kind of show it to the scarf. Even if it's not moving, like they will still go towards it and kind of show it to it. <laughs> and you go to show the scarf, the tire fly. And as you look around and you go to hug it for a second, you feel and you realize it's not there anymore. Friend? Where, where, did, where did friend go? Oh, no, friend. Friend, where are you? Where do you go to look? They will retrace their steps, so I guess they will go back through the road that leads to the tire fly and then near the building, the nest. And as you go around, you can see holding on to the scarf, but with a grip in both of his hands, that man you met named Carl. Oh. But his expression is no longer of open, clear love. It's of quiet conspiracy. And he just whispers to it. Now I need you to make sure that thing trusts us because we need to take it away from everything it cares about. If there's like a tree or something, Misha will duck behind it and like peek to see more without approaching it. Well, to, to themselves just going, Carl? And as you go to investigate, this feeling of dread overwhelms you as he just continues. You can't quite hear what he's saying, but he's whispering in this deep voice. It gets almost demonic and... and Suddenly you feel a tap on the top of your head. What? Misha will look up, like, what, what, what just touched me? When you look up, you see, looking down at you, Carl's scarf. Oh, how, how did you, uh... And Misha will look back at where Carl and the scarf were, or are. Are they still... Yeah, you look around and they're still there, and he's still whispering. But you also see and feel the other scarf kind of peek its head out with you and look... And then look back at you, and then look at where you seem to be looking. Are there t two scarves? Perhaps Carl has two of them. It could be that Carl has multiple friends. That makes sense. But Misha will ask the scarf, Do you know what he means? Has he said that same thing to you? And in response, the scarf curls itself off your shoulders and flies out to where Carl and apparently itself are and disappears into the image of them. Oh, how did you do that? Where, where did Carl go? And as you look at Carl and the scarf, the actual scarf pops its head out from this image, looks back and forth, and then just waves at you. Misha will confusedly wave back. Uh, um, Misha will approach the image really slowly and tentatively put their hand towards Carl and the scarf. As you reach your hand out to both of them, it passes through. Oh. And him and his scarf disappear. And all you see is what seemed to be the duplicate scarf still waving at you before it just lays its head in your hand. Huh. Kind of like when you go to do a high five, but then you just hold hands afterwards instead. <laughs> oh. Misha will frown and say, oh, I suppose I imagined things. I, I guess it has been a long day, uh, friend. Um, 
my apologies if I scared you. And the scarf just curls around you again and looks at your face. But something weird happens. Its shade seems to turn a different red. And your eyes start to burn. Oh god. With a silent fury. Welcome to the announcement break for Quest Friends episode 69, One Neon Night, part 10. I am Kyle, your GM, and our intro and outro songs are Friends and Hitoshio, both by Miracle of Sound. For today's announcement break, I've got another NPC shoutout for you. This shoutout is for Heather, or at IrishGirl71126 on Twitter, and Heather would like Virgule to read the following quote from A Comedy of Airs. And if you're not familiar with the Comedy of Errors, it's by that Shakespeare guy. Anyways, <coughs> am I in Earth, in Heaven, or in Hell? I mean, I think the answer is pretty obvious, but is sleeping or waking, mad or well advised? No, none to these, and to myself disguised. I'll say, as they say, and persever so. And in this mist, at all adventures go. What the hell does that mean? Anyways, thank you so much, Heather, for supporting us on Patreon. If you would like an NPC shout-out from a character of your choice, you can subscribe to us on Patreon at a $5 level or above. All right, that's all I got for you this week. As I mentioned last episode, we're going to take a bit of a break. We're going to have a little bit of cliffhanger time here as a group. So in two weeks, we won't be releasing a regular episode, and instead we're going to be releasing a bonus episode, Anyone Can Wear the Mask. It's of a new game by the same name that's coming out today, I think. Uh, and Tom, Emily, and I will be trying that out together. So that bonus episode will be coming out on Monday, December 28th, and then two weeks after that, on Monday, January 11th, we will return to this arc for the confrontation against the lady with cinnabar lips. But if you'd like additional content before then, you can always find stories, artwork, and behind-the-scenes insights at patreon.com slash questfriends. I'll see you there. The red light continues to burn in the present day, trying to almost burn a hole in the scarf itself, which stares at Misha's face, glaring back at Misha's red eye. I feel like Ellie would probably... She would eventually try to approach Misha. Would, would it be just approaching Misha? Like, what, what would she do? She would sort of hold her hands up like, it's okay, I'm... <laughs> on an arm. Just that look like as non-threatening as possible because Misha obviously looks very distressed. Carl died a long time ago, but that's that's okay. It's it's okay. At seeing that Misha will actually move away from Ellie and like try to not look at her. So like if Ellie goes in front of Misha, Misha will like try to turn yeah. away from her while like shaking their head and hugging the scarf a bit, but a bit less uh, tightly now. 
And as you turn away, almost like a, a shadowy imprint of Ellie's stays in your vision. A red ghost staying in the center of where you look, no matter how far away you look. In that case, Misha will try to move as far away from everybody and close their eyes a bit while letting go of the scarf. But as you close your eyes, it gets worse. Because then instead of being the main thing you see, it's the only thing you see. And a deep shame starts to rise. Uh, then Misha eventually is going to turn around towards Ellie and, and say, No, don't, don't say that it's okay. It's not, you know it's not okay. It's, it's not okay, Ellie. I know. It's not, <laughs> nothing is okay, Misha. But... That's not on you. No, no, stop saying that it isn't on me. Why, why aren't you, why, why aren't you angry? I was angry and full of so much hate for so long. But Carl told me, he said they're passionate, they're curious, and they can sing. He said he'd never seen anything like them that they were perfect he said you're gonna be so excited i just i know that you two will be best friends that's what he said to me when he came home to tell me about you and he lied you can see misha that memory all the way back in Ruletia. that moment where you had talked with shock and shock had said that he would warn you if things got dangerous and he didn't he lied Ayn had promised to keep you safe. Ayn had lied. Everybody had made so many promises, but every time they kept lying. And why on earth should this in any way be different? Well, he, he was wrong, Ellie. He, he, all of you are wrong by, 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 by thinking that any of this will be different. All of you just don't see it. Just keep lying to me to make me feel better. But, but... I, th th it's it's not working. It it will never work because because you know deep down that it's not true. I'm not lying, Misha. Carl wasn't lying. Well, he might have thought that, but but it wasn't true. I even if he thought that, even even if 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 you thought that about me, it's it's not it's not true. If it if it wasn't for what he thought about me, he wouldn't have died, Ellie. Okay, so I press this button, or, or this button, or is it... Oh, it's... And Carl points to the ignition on the car alongside the scarf. It's this button, isn't it? Yes, but Carl needs to be careful, because the tire fly can go really fast, and I don't want it to go too fast and crash. It has happened to Misha before, but it's really scary, and Misha doesn't want to scare Carl or the scarf. <laughs> And Carl laughs from the driver's seat of the tire fly and gives you another wink. Trust me, if anything happened to me, my wife would make it so I should be the last person to be concerned. Oh, M Misha wouldn't like your wife to be mad. Uh, I guess Misha hasn't asked Carl as much. Do, do, do you think she will like Misha? Oh, I think she'll love you. She likes to act tough, but... She's a little shy like the scarf. Oh, okay. Misha can be very careful with her so that she isn't scared like the scarf was. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. I'm sure you two will be best friends. Best friends? Oh, Misha cannot wait to meet her. And and do you think she will like the tire fly? Misha could show her the tire fly too. I think, I think she'll love it. But we have to practice to make sure we can get it home. Yes, yes, Misha, Misha will do that. Has, has Misha shown you the horn? And Misha will do the little horn that does the like croak sound. Carl can press it if Carl wants. <laughs> it doesn't distract Misha and it's very fun. Carl <laughs> looks alarmed at first, like he did not expect that sound. <laughs> but then he, he smiles and gets a conspiratorial look and just gently pushes his hand towards it and presses it, and it goes 
and he's like a he's like a fucking kid at like a candy shop. He's so excited by this. It's so fun. I really like it. I hope Carl likes it too. <laughs> and you hear a voice from the speakers go, "Are the racers ready?" Yes. Though it won't be a very fast race cuz Misha Misha wants Carl to be safe. You're currently on the race track. Carl, as he has promised, came back the day afterwards. And while Father couldn't see him, it seems that Father is actually really excited about having him come back. I mean, he was the one who encouraged Pete to let you two race around a little bit. Misha is really happy about that. Was Ayn around at any point? Because Misha also would like to introduce Ayn to Carl and the scarf. Ayn was not. She'd be like, oh, yes, I would love to. I, 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 I'm a little busy right now, though. Oh. And she would go back to do more research, despite the protests of Stein, who <laughs> just really wanted to get out once in a while. <laughs> that's that's okay. When I isn't busy, I can meet him. And uh, even even if 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 she's still busy after Michelle. Leaves, Misha will come back. Misha doesn't want to stop seeing Ayn or Father sometimes. And Misha definitely does not have to worry about CK though, who volunteered to do like a exciting racetrack style announcement for you two just driving. He probably thought it would scare Carl, and so that's why he got into it. But Carl is loving it. And he says, All right, shall we get started? Yes, let's do it. He presses the button, and the car slowly starts inching out of the gate, bit by bit. <laughs> Carl is going real slow. He's got, like, his hands on both sides, like the little old lady behind the steering wheel. Just taking as slow as he wants, because he does not want to scare you. Misha is, is, like, not used to this slow speed in a while, but they won't say anything, because they don't want also to scare Carl. So they will still be excited and, and talking as the car moves. <laughs> So, like, five minutes passed and you can finally say your first turn left. And then another five minutes go, turn right. Um, me, me, Misha it usually goes faster with Ayn. So, um, if you feel comfortable, we could go faster. But Misha doesn't want Carl to go faster if, if Carl doesn't want you, because uh, uh, safety is the most important thing. That's what Misha's conscience always says. <laughs> and in the corner of your eye, you can see the thing that someone's typing a message from Misha's conscience. Like that happens when someone's typing a message in the uh, chat. D dot, dot, dot. And it's been going on for a while. Oh boy. But Carl looks at you, smiles and gives what to anyone else would look like just a nice young old man smile. But as his wife would tell you, is the most devilish smile in existence. And he guns it. Oh god, Misha will, will... They will think for a second to tell him to slow down, but they really like this speed too. So they are just all in it and they will just lean forward, looking very carefully at the road to tell him when to turn and things like that. But they are just... This is their speed, their maximum speed. And you keep going and you're the navigator, so you keep telling Carl, you know, left, right, do the loop-de-loop. -loop. All right, now you're gonna have to stop and go backwards because there's a crab there. It's a very angry crab. Crab. We don't upset the crab and everything is going great, but you get this feeling of dread, this feeling of guilt, like you shouldn't be doing this and that this is wrong. This isn't safe. And that increases even more when Carl taps on the brakes and just kind of goes, huh, that doesn't seem to be working as good as I thought it would. Oh, it's not, it's not, it's not slowing. Uh, oh no, uh, this, this, uh, hasn't happened before. Uh, M Misha, sorry, uh, we should, we should slow down, Carl. Maybe, maybe, uh, press a little bit less on the, on the accelerator. Maybe try doing it like that. Oh, don't worry about it. I've ridden many a runaway Tyrannosaurus before. <laughs> Although it is a bit strange, these brakes don't seem to be working at all. And as you, like, look and he gets ready for the next turn, suddenly the message completes and your vision is just covered with the words stop, 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 
Stop. Stop, Carl, stop. Oh, uh, of course I will. Um, you said there were mystery boxes around here. Maybe one of those will help. And he starts reaching around, trying to find something. And you can see his scarf is reaching around, looking for it too. I assume there's not a handbrake in this in this cursed car. There isn't a handbrake, but he, you can tell he's not going to make the turn. He's not moving hard enough. You actually can see the wheel turning even further right. It's drifting. It's, it's drifting drastically. In fact, the wheel is spinning to the right, just keeps on spinning, and he's not stopping. He's not noticing. It. He's not doing anything about it. Misha will try to grab the wheel and redirect it so that they don't crash. I'm, 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 my apologies, Carl. I, I need to do this. We need to not crash. This is going too fast. We need to stop the car. Oh no, Misha, it's fine. No. You grasp out and you grab the wheel, which continues to inexplicably keep turning right. And so you crank it as left and as hard as you can. To the outside observer, they would have seen a car going perfectly straight, and then they would have seen it suddenly jerk to the left before tumbling over and over and over and over again and colliding with the wall in the worst crash the Speedy Speed Boys had ever had. Carl came home and told me that he loved you, and... Even before I met you, I loved you too. And I didn't know it was you when I met you. But I I loved you and I love you, Misha. And I know that you feel like I shouldn't. But I do. And you deserve, you deserve to be loved, Misha. You deserve to be loved for who you are. And you are good. What? But I, I'm, I am not though. I, because of me, he, he, when he went back to tell you those things, it was the last time he went back. If, if, if he had met any other kid, he would have loved that kid just the same, and it would have, it would have fixed all of this. None of this would have happened, Ellie. He told me you were special, and you are, you are Misha in the best way. No, I. I am different, yes, and special, but not in not in a good way. Not not in a way that will keep any of you safe. It only has caused problems, Ellie. Not just for him and for you, but be because of me, Shop doesn't have any powers anymore. And it really was just a matter of luck that Simon Scotch was fine after we went into a roller coaster. It's not. It's not okay. It's not fine. This is not because of you. Because of you, our lives are better. All of the things that happened were from our own choices, too. And I don't know everything that happened back then, but I know we all still love you. I still love you. Our lives are better for you being in it, Misha. Ellie's going... She'll stop if Misha recoils. But she is gonna step forward with the intent to hug, but she's not gonna push them. If Ellie approaches, what Misha is going to do is they, they will recoil, but they will take the scarf off and put it on Ellie instead and say, you, 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 this is the only thing you should be hugging. It's not mine anyways. It's not mine. It was never mine. It was Carl's and now it's yours and it should be yours. It wants to be yours, Misha. And that's when everyone can see Misha's eye spark with a furious red light. It doesn't want to be yours. Why would it want to be yours? Why would it want to do anything with it? It was associated with that man. And after all, and for the first time since the heart of Charmande, the text from your conscience appears in your eye again. You are special. Do you remember why? No. Dangerous? A monster? A murderer? No. This is all ridiculous. He's trying to stay out of your earshot, Misha, but you can hear Pete win from the edge of the hallway where you are sitting. 
He's been pacing back and forth, talking with various other members of the Speedy Speed Boys. Word spread quickly after the crash. You don't quite know what happened because nobody really told you. You were quickly taken away and you haven't seen anything of Carl other than his scarf, which immediately wrapped itself around your shoulders and, and tried to stay with you and is in fact still on you right now, hugging you tighter than it ever had before. Pete is like in earshot. He doesn't think he is, but he's busy talking with other speedy speed boys. He's eyeing the room you're sitting in front of, which is Colodi's room. He seems to want to have some words, but <laughs> as I said, news spread quickly and he's got a lot of other things he needs to deal with. In fact, after a few seconds, you can see as he kind of gives you a sad look, but has to walk away because he has to take care of something else related to the crash. So yeah, you're alone. Oh, great. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what... I mean, Mish is confused. And I guess if there's anybody they can talk to, they would ask where Carl is or how is Carl or something, because I guess they don't fully get what happened. But otherwise, you're just going to be looking around while sitting there because they kind of feel like they they have to stay there. Like they're, they're kind of like when a kid is grounded or something. And you spoke to a lot of people, but they're all brushing back and forth. And many of the Speedy Speed Boys seem not to want to speak to you, except for this small child with a big mushroom growing out of his head who seemed real excited, but had no idea who Carl was. But eventually you do hear a familiar voice from your side. Because as she slides down to sit against the wall next to you, Ayn says, Hi. Uh, hello, Ayn. Um, do you know what what is going on? Do you know, uh, is Carl okay after, after the crash? Oh, well, and she turns her head away from you. You're okay, right? S Stein told me you weren't harmed in the crash or anything, but... He can exaggerate sometimes. Well, I guess physically I am okay, but I am worried. The, the, the car was going really fast and I just wanted to make sure that Carl was safe because, uh, because I like Carl a lot and, and I didn't want anything to happen to Carl. Did Misha do something wrong? Is it because I damaged the tire fly? Is, it, is that why everybody s seems upset? Oh, oh no. N n no, no. I, um, uh, Ayn doesn't know what to say and is just kind of sitting there. At one point, the scarf just falls into her hands, trying to comfort, and she just, after forever, asks, How's your conscience doing? Oh. I, th I think she's okay. She actually, um, she she saw that we were driving too fast. She actually told us to stop, and I, I was trying to do that because of that. She saw that it wasn't safe, so I, I was I was trying to I was trying to protect Carl from 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 the ride because it was too fast. She let me know that it was too fast. A series of emotions goes over Ayn's face. She's concerned for you. She's sad. She's confused when she hears that your conscience kept you safe. But when you say that your conscience is the one that helped you stop, Ayn gets a weird look that you didn't recognize from her. Ayn looks furious. Did Misha do something wrong? Oh, oh, n no, no. Misha did not do anything wrong. Misha doesn't believe that. I looks really upset. I have a I, I have another fun fact today. Misha likes fun facts. R remember the promise that we made? Yes, that is in part why I had to save Carl because I had to make sure my friend was safe, just like I I'm going to make sure you are safe. Well, and she stands up, her fists curled. My fun fact is that I found a way to honor that promise. And she walks into the room in front of you. Misha will frown at that. Oh, okay. And so you wait, just sitting there, you and the scarf. It feels like days. 
just the two of you there. And that's because it is. You don't see much. A few Jarvis models go back and forth, the scarf limply moving around as you occasionally try to quietly sing. After a few days, Ayn leaves the room, gives you more assurances that everything is going to be okay, and disappears. And then a few days later, the door opens, and in his ratty lab coat, Father looks at you and motions for you to come inside. There? But, but Father never lets me get in, in there. He doesn't say anything other than motions. Oh, okay. I will go there. Is Carl in there too? <sighs> okay, I'll go in. You make your way inside. You see a variety of machines. I, I can't describe them now, and honestly, I don't want to describe them. It doesn't matter what they are. What matters is what they do. But in the center, in the middle of all the machines, is a space for you to sit. And as you go to sit down, you feel the scarf squirm in your hands a little bit, trying to like recoil back as Kalodi just gruffly pulls it off of your shoulders, throwing it into the corner and mumbling something you don't hear, but that I think we all as the audience should hear and that you know after the fact. I'll just dump it with the rest of the body when it's done. God. Misha will try to, to motion for it. C could I, could I, could I have Sit. it? Sit! Okay, um, how, how is, how is Carl? Is he okay? Uh, I haven't seen him after, after the crash and, uh, um, and I was wondering if you knew. And as you're saying that, Kalodi does not seem to pay your words any mind. As he walks to another corner of the room, and he picks up a device, which he starts speaking into. Your room is really nice, Father. Thank you for letting me in. Log of Dr. Cygnus Collodi, day last. Yes, today will be my final log on this misguided experiment. I've solved it! With the aid of my research assistant, I have finally isolated the root of this unyielding infection. And with this knowledge, I can finally rid myself of that grinning specter. There are dangers, of course, but... I have taken precautions to protect myself. Kalodi? Miss Ein, I request you stay away from the subject. The... subject? Wait, what's going on? Is that... Stay back, Ein! Kalodi, this, this isn't what I meant. That is irrelevant. You know what she can do. She isn't here. I promised them, Kalodi. I promised they would be safe. And I promised the world. The rest plays out like it did before. Like it always had been. A streak of icy blue hair, hot, angry red light, an ice pick on your skull. This isn't what had been promised. This wasn't safe. This wasn't okay. Nothing was okay. You can feel the lady inside of you, scrambling out of your body and back into the data sphere. But not quickly enough, as your soul, her soul, is ripped in two. But it isn't just a memory this time. Because in the present day, as your feet lift from the earth and you spiral into the atmosphere, the horrifying truth dawns on you, Misha. With each new memory, each tear gained and every spell learned, each step taken into the data sphere, the two fragments of her soul have gotten closer and closer and closer to each other. And now, the Lady with Cinnabar Lips intends to be whole again. On the other side, all of you see as Misha trying to explain, trying to justify that no, Misha is a danger, that you, you, you don't understand. Suddenly, Ellie, you feel the scarf in your hands fall limp. And the rest of you see the body of Misha Jarvis fall onto the ground. Shock is rushing to Misha's side. Yeah, I think same. Yeah, Ellie would have probably tried to catch them. <laughs> I'll let you catch them. Okay. I don't want to roll. Okay. You catch Misha and you all run over, hoping that they'll have some response, but there's nothing. Misha's scarf isn't moving. 
Misha themselves aren't responding. At this point, the only thing that remains is the bright light shining from two cinnabar eyes. Any questions or thoughts before we start? So what are the consequences for us if we die again? Oh my god. <laughs> the story's over. Uh yeah, let's 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 talk about that to scare everyone a little bit. So consequences of losing putting your pools down to zero. I have said in the past that this does not necessarily mean death. It doesn't even necessarily mean you're out of the story. If it works for the story, you may die. But what it means is that a permanent consequence happens. An example of that could be Misha being forced to stay as stratic life rather than being able to return to their android body or shock uh, remaining disconnected from the data sphere or Sarah breaking up with Hop. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not going to break the story, but it could be. No, but it, it would. It would. <laughs> But it would be a permanent consequence. It breaks the story when all of your players riot at the story ends. <laughs> just, just take just take basically anything I've done to Tom, such as what I did during the Clockwork City, or what we did with the Nano Spirits, or everything with Lowell. All of those would be punishments for losing all of your pools. So what you're saying is I get punished as if I die every arc. <laughs> <laughs> every single one. <laughs> <sighs> uh, Sing? Hmm, let me see. I guess Misha would know. I mean, it's not like singing is a foreign concept, so I guess it would- Is this foot loose? Cologne doesn't la allow dancing? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, yeah, but, hmm. The important part of singing to your- to your clothes. <laughs> your soul, the deepest part inside of you. You've got to share it with the clothes. <laughs> no, please. But Misha will ask the scarf, like, do you know what he means? Has he said that same thing to you? And the car and the scarf takes its first drag of a cigarette. <laughs> Alright, I suppose we should start speaking. Listen, to listen, each other. oh my god, once again, listen. <laughs> there's the pantomimes, my dude. This is gonna be a long relationship. Misha Jarvis. <laughs> Why? There's pantomimes. It's a thing. And disrespect. It's such disrespect. You did the same thing in the memory episode too. It's, I'm so upset. So do we assume that Misha like did stop singing, but then also kind of the, uh, a second after was like, fuck it and continued again because the scarf started moving? Yeah, well, the thing with Misha is that Misha is always singing. Ah, uh, yeah. So I think just it was a stretch to do it and have that power appear so suddenly, but it just felt right that Misha just kept going. <laughs> it's just the thing, like like the humming of the computer when you turn it on and it's just like, and that's just like a thing that just happens now. Yeah. We already have the biggest plot hole in that apparently Ellie has not recognized Carl's scarf in the entirety. Of <laughs> well, I imagine that maybe there's like multiple scarves like that or... I mean, he had many scarves. Yeah, I figured it was just like... Plus like we, you know, since the memory episode, you have known that Carl Carl has a scarf, and we have known that, and yet we didn't make the connection. So I think it's not really a plot hole if us, the players, didn't make the connection. Ellie had to stop herself from attacking everyone who had a purple scarf many decades ago. Yeah, she probably went through that at some point. Also, it's been 15 years, and when you lost the scarf was the same time Ellie got very distracted by a, uh, a charming new lady, <laughs> which, as we'll see, talk about it. is very important to the scarf disappearing. It is Ray's fault all of this happened and she doesn't know it. Oh my god. Now it's Ray's fault too. Yeah, it's At Ray's least fault. It's not just Ellie. <laughs> it's everybody's fault. I'm here for it. But it's not Hopper's fault for once. That's why I'm here for it. Yeah. No one had anything big they wanted to do? Okay, because we're about to move into hardcore endgame. Jesus Christ. Which would make this episode short, but I think that's fine, right? I think it's okay. 
I don't think there's anything more we me- we need. <laughs> I like that when you said anything more anyone wants to do, we all just like straight faced, silent, shook our heads at you. No. (laughs) 